So we've put together two of the demo teams. We've used them for the examples uh, that we've just shown you, but we're just gonna go through a few of the turns. These come from the Ruthless deck. So you've got a Ruthless deck with your baddies, your Wood Breeze, um, other people in there as well. And then you've got a Lawful deck. So these come out of your Ruthless ones. So I've got Brian Blake, who's my uh, leader, because he gives me two red dice for my strategy points. I've then got, um, who we've got next? We've got Smitty is there. Um, I've then got Lily. And then on the end there is Bruce, Bruce Cooper. So that doesn't quite get me to the 200 points that we were just gonna use for the demo. So I've used some of the equipment as well. So I've got a hammer and some football pads. So you can buy extra equipment, even though my governor here has a, I think he's got his Bretta and he's also got um, a knife. Um, because of the dual wield, it makes sense to use the um, hammer. So we're gonna add that to him, give him two melee attacks if he gets a chance. And his football pads makes him a little bit more difficult to take out in melee. And that rounds me out as a, uh, close to the 200 point limit. So for my demo team, uh, I've gone with the Prisoners. Uh, I've got Dexter as my leader. I've got Axel. I have Andrew. I have Thomas. Now, because the, the Prisoners uh, are all like one faction, I didn't have any other Prisoners to go in there. So I'm using Michonne because she's neutral. So she can join any character, any team she wants. So it's the Wandering Nomad uh, Michonne. Then to get myself up to the points, I've got Mark and Terry because they're always useful. Uh, within each of the deck of cards that you get, the Lawful or the Ruthless, so the Prisoners have got faction rules. So their faction rule card uh, shows that they've got trust issues, uh, shockingly, from some Prisoners. Uh, they're my primary faction, so when it comes to the strategy phase, I don't need to roll any dice. I get one strategy point for each Prisoner that I've got in. So at the start of every round, if I've got all four, I get my four strategy points. Each different group and little like the Green family, uh, Hilltop, Woodbread, they've all got their own special rules. So that's my prisoners one. Right, so now we've we've gone through some of the how-tos and all the, the changes, we're gonna play through a full turn of Walking Dead Call to Arms. So we, we've we've chosen the, the, the supply grab uh, scenario from the book which will be coming out uh, because it's quite a simple one and we, and we can go through it quite easily. Uh, so we've got the, the, the board, 20 by 40 set up, scenery, uh, it's supposed to be everything's two inch gap so a walker can move through, we've got some areas over there which we won't be playing into. Uh, Artistic license, we'll try and oh, keep yes. it in the middle. Uh, so we, the first thing we need to do is uh, roll for, for our setting up initiative. So uh, I'll let you do it Daniel. Go on, no, thank you. Uh, so it is me, um, so th with this one we've got nine supplies, we're playing at 200 points and that the point limit then dictates how many supplies you have, how many walkers you have, but it's it's just a table to read off. We've got 200 points, so we know it's nine supplies and it's going to be 15 walkers. If you go up to the next sort of level, up, like a 300 point game, that'd be 20 walkers. So it's just there's no working out anything, it's just read it off. We've already put nine sort of supplies on, we would put them down, we've already put nine walkers on, so we've got um, some more walkers to, to put on in a second. So I will um, start going with them. So. Uh, I'm going to be having this edge and Richard is having this edge, so I want to try and make it a little bit more difficult for him, but I can't put them uh, too overcrowded, but I'm just going to put one here. Uh, just put one there. Um, we're quite stacked in, aren't we? So we're going to go one there. One scratchel there. And I suppose we'll put one on here just to make... And the last one, you just hide in the woods over there. Okay, so once everything's on, you've got your supplies on, you've got your walkers on, we've got 15 walkers, because again, we're at 200 point limit, then we go for the deployment. This deployment's a little bit different, so you split your army into two batches, uh, as evenly as possible, because I've got four models, two and two. You put your first two on, then your opponent gets to put on their first half, you go for your second half. So I've split, just to explain mine, because there's a Woodbury commander rule that will come into play, I need to partner mine up to make sure there's always a, a commander. So I'm gonna put Bruce down, he needs some cover for some shooting. So he's gonna start here. And the other person he's gonna be with is Smitty, and Smitty is expendable, so he's gonna go here. Right, so with my luck, I'd like to say I'm going to play it a little bit tactically, but I feel like I'm just going to try and kill Dan. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have uh, Axel and Thomas starting right at the edge. Okay, so then it would pass back to me. So I'm going to go, similarly, I'm going to go with Governor on this side and then Lily, and we're just going to get straight into it. 
Uh, I've got three left uh, because I've got uh, five on my team, so it's slightly different. Tactically, holding back three rather than two it might give me the edge. I also might die straight away. However, we'll find out. So, Andrew, Dexter, and then cheeky little Michonne with Mark and Terry. So, we're all deployed, we're ready to start going. So, turn one, I've rolled for my strategy points. I've got two strategy points to play with, so I'm going to have to be quite careful with them because they're not going to go too far. I don't know what I need to do with them just yet. So, I'm going to activate Smitty. Smitty is going to shoot this one. Um, so, we do the sort of line of sight check that we did before. I can actually, so this is something different. So, normally you'd go base to base, uh, center to center. I can actually trace a line from anywhere on mine to anywhere on the walker that goes around this barrier. So I'm going to negate that red defence for the walker, so that's something different here. So with it being close range, so again, close range up to 10 inches, I know it's definitely up to 10 inches. Um, I shoot with a white, red, red with Smitty, so that's what we're going to see. And I get four with a headshot, so I know it can't be defended. Yeah, absolutely not. No, one. But it has triggered mayhem. And it has triggered, uh, so it's not a reliable weapon. It's not a reliable weapon. So we've got an ammo check straight away for Smitty. So Smitty rolls, he's good, he rolled his shield. So that was something. So because I got the headshot, I know I've killed the walker. So that's important, walker dead. But also because there was the headshot on there, I needed to roll this to see if it was uh, out of ammo. I'm still good for ammo. Now this is where the danger happens. So anything that's within 10 inches is going to shamble towards Smitty. So this is where we start seeing. So Come on, anywhere walkers. base to base. So that's just out, but that one is definitely in. So that one's coming towards, and that is just short, fortunately, where that's activated. So I can probably run away from that, and it's not going to chase me. So that's Walker 1. Uh, is this one within? We're going to say that one is. So that is going to shamble without taking out the tree. So I'm trying to clear. So tactically, I was trying to clear those to give me a chance to get in with the governor and Lily. Um, this one is then going to shamble, and if it hits, so it's always going to move at six until it hits its barrier. But the first time it hits a barrier, it sticks, so that one sticks, and the next time it moves, it would just carry on round it. Um, was there anyone else within? Is that one going to be within? We're going to say that one is. So we're going to move that into the car so that it moves as much as it can, hit on the barrier, and stopped. So I've cleared out. So tactically, they're now locked down, they're not going to move again, so we can get some things done. So, I've done that, I can then sneak away, and I want to be outside of the kill zone of that walker. So we're going to sneak away, it's going to move up to there, that's my four inches, and that should be outside of two inches kill zone. And that's him activated, so that was Smitty's turn. Good job, Smitty. Right, so seeing what Smitty's done there, I'm going to do something very similar. Uh, create a mayhem early on, pull the walkers in, freeze up for the rest of the turn. So Dexter here is going to shoot that little pretty walker there. So as we can see, clear line of sight. Well within 10 inch. So he's got his uh, standard white shooting. And then it's another red, uh, but this is multiple shots too. So the first one, first shot against that walker is three. Three, and I know I can't defend that on this red die because that only goes up to two. So I know it's definitely caused uh, damage. There's no headshot on it, so it's a prone walker. So it is. So we're going to knock that walker over. We're not using prone markers. We're just going to put that walker over. Oh, it's going to roll away. Stay. Uh, shooting a prone walker. Uh, might as well go for it. So same again. Just a two this time. Doesn't really matter either way. There was no headshot on it. One. So it's, it's caught a wound, but it's not in melee, so it's not dead. Unfortunate, but I had to go for it. That, however, is causing mayhem. So the, the, the chubby little walker in the back there, he's coming straight off the supply, which is what I was going for. Dunking in there, activated. Yeah, activated, so that's free. And then thankfully, We've got one here, and that's going to come. So, yeah. just to explain, it can move through the tree, but because that's classed as difficult terrain, it halves its movement. So, we've probably got two inches movement beforehand, and then it's going to get stuck just on. We're going to stop it about here, because it would get part of the tree. Right, so I've cleared some of the walkers off from that area. However, I'm kind of thinking to myself, with his second action, what can he do? As my SP for the prisoners is four, because I have four prisoners, that's their rule. I'm going to use one of my SPs for one of my leader special orders. 
So Dexter, uh, being the, the group leader, he's going to uh, use follow me. It's kind of a, a cheeky tactic to pull someone else within their, their is it, yeah, kill zone away. So what he's going to do, because they can move through the friendly models, Dexter is just going to sneak to the other side of the barrier, take young Andrew with him. Doesn't activate or affect Andrew at all, it just means he's moved further forward, totally for free. Use one of my SPs, but I think it'll be worthwhile. So I'm going to activate the Governor. The Governor's going to use one of his um, strategy points, so I got two for the round. So I'm going to use one with the, the Governor. The Governor's going to run around with pre-measured it, that's eight, and that causes noise. So the Governor runs around to here, he causes noise, and that's going to pull the nearest walker into a shamble into him. But by doing the, uh, the move, the follow me, that also got a free move for Lily um, to move forwards, so she's coming closer to here. That hasn't activated her in any way. So action one was Governor, but it's brought Lily along. Now, Governor's in, in all that war, I'd have to wait and resolve this combat. Now I'm gonna spend an action to melee. So the Governor's melee basic is a white red, and I gave him the hammer, so that would normally give me an extra attack, but this time I've only got one action to spend, so I'm gonna roll it uh, all together now. Um, so I've got a very good roll. So that is five with two headshots. That looks like a dead walker to me. Well, I, I could get five. <laughs> I could get five on one red. Oh, oh that's a blank. Yeah, so, yeah. dead walker. Well done, Governor. That's what Governor does best. So he has taken out that one, but he's activated himself, but he's moved a Lily into a really good position for next time. Right, so thinking tactically with my second move, having moved Andrew uh, with Dexter with, uh, do a, uh, with Follow Me, what he's going to do now, he can just about sneak that supply. So he's not causing no, he's not causing mayhem, but he's managed to get all the way to this a, a supply, scavenge it with his second action. So on our cards, uh, we've got a little section at the bottom for supplies. So Andrew's gonna get one down there. Now that's uh, VPs right in my bag straight away with my second action. And with this, so you get a victory point for having it in the first place, and you get a second victory point if he's still alive by the end of it. So I need to kill him to basically cancel out one extra victory point that you're going to get. He can't kill Andrew. <laughs> so, although it is a very pretty target, taking out Andrew at the moment, um, I'm worried if I don't take this supply, um, Andrew's going to get it on the next turn, um, and then he's going to get too much of a lead. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to sneak Lily forward. She's going to go to this side of it present a bit of a threat, spend her second action, and that's the scavenge. That's her activated, that was her too, but it levels the score, and that's what I need at the moment. So that goes on Lily's card. So I need to get stuck in. Uh, Michonne being a badass, she's gonna just run straight into battle. So she's gonna run straight into that one. The noise she's caused will pull the, the one closest walker, which is that one, into her. Mac and Terry poured along with her, just chilling out there at the back. So Michelle has uh, blue for melee and blue for the katana. She also has follow-up attack. So if I win the first one, I can go straight and attack the second walker. So the first walker. Ouch. Uh, five and a headshot, I'm gonna say that one's dead. And the headshot kills it. So straight on, follow-up attack. Another walker within the kill zone. Obviously gonna be that one. Two blues. Just a two. two. So it could be defended. Uh, don't take it out of the tree. And we roll, defended. Got a two. So absolutely nothing happens. So just to be clear, two with the headshot in defense doesn't cause a bite from a walker, just defended. So that's Michonne activated. And that really annoying walker that won't go down. So I've got Bruce left to activate. So Bruce is over here. Um, what I'm thinking of doing is running him over here to get near that supply, but then I want to try and clear out some walkers. What I'm worried about in terms of my position is if he shoots or does anything else, I don't want to be within that kill zone, because if I'm within that kill zone on the next phase, the walker's going to come around and munch me. So I know I can get to here uh, as a run. That's outside of the kill zone, and the next nearest walker, um, I think, is this one. So that is going to come in the six inches towards me, and it's still going to be outside because it's going to donk off the car. So it's going to get to the car, and that's now activated. So what I want to do is try and clean out those two uh, walkers. Um, so with my shooting, um, Bruce is uh, with close range, and I get the benefit of assault now. So that's one of my keywords. Assault means I get an extra shot. So already it would have two shots because I'm close range within five inches. That's three shots potentially. 
With the first one, I'm going to go all out in case I run out of ammo. Um, so I'm a white for close range and a red for shooting. And I'll spend my last strategy point to add an extra red to it. So we're going to try and shoot this one first with white, red, red. And that is two with a headshot. Possibly save. No, no, not at all. So I've caused a headshot, so that could cause an ammo. But because I'm reliable, I can ignore the first critical success. So the first headshot does not cause the ammo with the reliable weapon. I've now got to lose my extra red, so I'm down to white red to try and clean out this one with shot number two. And that is <laughs> not a good roll. So four with two headshots. He can't defend it, but now I've ignored the first one because my reliable weapon. Now I've got to do the ammo check. So see if I would get shot three. I don't, so I'm out of ammo. So I need to put the ammo counter on his card and I've got to spend an action next turn in order to remove that. He's not going to shoot again. So he wouldn't have got his third shot anyway, but now we've caused some mayhem. So we can ignore these two walkers, we can ignore this one, they've already moved. All out war, he would have been absolutely swarmed, but this means I can shoot a lot more in this version of the game. So we're going to shamble towards and that's going to hit the car. He's activated, or she's activated. And then this one is going to be into the car here. So they've now both activated. So that's cleaned up a lot of the board. And that's the end of Bruce for this turn. Right, so this is one of the perks of having a, a larger team uh, and uh, not having initiative first. I've still got two characters left to go, uh, while Dan's got absolutely nothing left. So what I'm going to do is be very clever. So I've got Thomas, who's his tactician. I can spend one SP, because he's a tactician, to change his type. For the, for the whole turn. So he's going to turn himself into a runner. So now I'm down to 2 SP. And then what he's also going to do, because a runner, he's going to spend 1 SP to add the extra 2 inches. So now he can run 10 inch. And because of uh, Dan's foolishness of shooting everything, uh, nothing's going to hear me run. So Thomas, just going <laughs> to gonna mosey on over there. So he'd get his normal 8 inches uh, run yep. that he's used, turn of speed, he's become a, uses tactician ability to become a runner and use the runner ability to run a little bit further. So he's spent 2 SP but it's a very good use to get to that supply. Yep. I saved the SP on purpose, a bit further on because I know that these little tactics could really sway a game. So a second action, just going to uh, take that supply there and scavenge it. But he's activated. So then, that, that leaves me with, with uh, Axel left. What I'm thinking is I don't want to go into the walker phase, having to defend. I know Michonne's a tough cookie, but Axel's just going to jog on in, into that walker. So Axel's melee is white. Uh, however, I could choose to shoot with a handgun in melee, but I, I don't really want to. There'd be no repercussions at this stage, because everything's been activated. However, I'm outnumbering. So with Michonne there, I get the extra red anyway. So I'll see what happens. Just a two. Two, no headshot. One. So we've caused a wound and that drops a walker onto the floor. Perfect. This is uh, again an, uh, another subtle change. You have the option of pushbacks. Uh, I could choose to leave the walker there and prone if I really wanted to. Just not that foolish. So I'm going to push it back an inch, make it prone because coming up later, there's a chance that that walker could stand up. And if you hadn't have chosen to push back, it could stand up and lock both uh, Axel and Michelle. So we've done the action phase. Everyone's moved, everyone's done what they needed to do. We move on to the, the walker phase. And the first thing you do with the walker phase, you get out your kill zone template and you center it over all your walkers. So we've done this and what we know is that this walker does have uh, Dexter within. So he moves around and he's into combat. Yep, unfortunately for me. Uh, so now uh, Dexter, unfortunately, is going to have to defend, defend. from uh, defends one, walker. one walker, one die, and that's where we get that outnumbering thing where the second walker would add another two, but we've just got the one, and it's a blank, so we've got nothing to defend. So with my defence, I've got four uh, and a critical and a headshot, means absolutely nothing, because I'm just defending. However, with the walkers attacking, there's no pushbacks. Even if I defended it, it still wouldn't push back. So unfortunately, at the start of turn two, I would be in melee, or I could withdraw. Uh, the next phase is we look around any walkers that haven't activated already, take it in sequence with the person with initiative, we get to move them. So this one has stayed out of it because we tried to play the game over here. So this one is going to move towards the nearest survivor, moves there, and then that would be shown as activated as well. Then each different scenario uh, has got a different event phase. So unlike the, the event cards with, with it all at war, each scenario has got a specific uh, event. 
Uh, we'll, we'll skip that for this one. We want you to find out how the events roll uh, when you purchase the, the brilliant book, which will come out. So uh, we, we could check for herds, as we showed you in the examples. We haven't got any herds. We haven't got five within that kill zone template. So the next thing we do is move to the end phase. So now we're into the uh, end phase. Uh, we've got to first check for any of the prone walkers to whether they're going to stand up or not. So we've got one here and we roll the black die. Action die, we get a shield. So that is back. So the, the move to push back was obviously the right one because that would have locked up those two. Uh, next thing we're going to look to. Got oh, we've one got one over there. there. Ah, Heidi. And that stands up as well. Not looking good for Andrew over there. So the next thing we do, we've done the stand ups. We, if anyone was bitten, we've got an infection roll and they could potentially lose another uh, health. We haven't got any of those. So now we, the last thing we do is um, victory points. You've got your two. I've got two banked. I've got one banked, so it's 2 1 at the moment. And then we would hand over initiative. Um, for the start of turn two. So there we have it. That's uh, an overview of Call to Arms with some of the, the key differences, some of the, the gameplay mechanics we've got going on. Yeah, it's, uh, it's an exciting time going into end of July, August, uh, when the book comes out. So I know personally, I've got every miniature from the whole of All Out War. Uh, I, I quite like the, the, the fact that we, we're gonna be get stuck in, we're gonna have big battles, 10, 20 characters fighting it off. I'm gonna get Liam in there. I, I, I'm gonna have Clem in there. I'm, I'm gonna have you know, ten kids, ten adults, and I'm just gonna be able to well, kill Dan. So what I particularly like is when I play all that war, I tend to now narrow it down to the five to ten characters I tend to use, and there's some that I just discount. I just wouldn't use it. With this, it gives you another reason to use yeah. them. Everybody has a use. So even some of the narrow, so the smaller pointed characters they become especially useful for scavenging because once they've grabbed it, they sometimes have this special rule where they score you more victory points. Um, so there's different ways to, to play it in different scenarios. Yeah, the, the mechanics behind all, all of the teams, uh, there's there's a few new keywords coming in, uh, but the, the basics uh, are all there, all the new cards. The fact that what you see is what you get on all the characters. So Lacey will come at you with Distract and her Pitchfork. For, for I think it's 14 or 16 points. You don't need to add anything to her. She's ready, built, going to enhance your team. So you've built this collection. It's just another way to use it, a different mode of, of playing, and it, it's quite speedy when you get into it. Yeah. So hope you enjoy.